Hey Tom, can you imagine fast forwarding one year and going to a Toyota dealership and seeing two great off-roaders for sale? And of course, I'm talking about the new 4Runner and the new Land Cruiser. Yeah, so really exciting time to be a Toyota 4-Wheel Drive fan because not only do we know the details on the new 250 Series Land Cruiser, but we've seen some spy shots. We've heard some rumblings internally about the new sixth generation of 4Runner. And in this video, we're gonna do a little bit of speculating and talk about where we think the new 4Runner is gonna lie in terms of price compared to the Land Cruiser and how it's gonna fit into the Toyota lineup and some things to expect out of this new model. Yeah, and just so you guys know that we're not just sticking our fingers into the wind and making stuff up, I've actually sat in the new Land Cruiser, had hands-on with it, Tommy, so I feel like I'm very familiar with it. I have not driven it, but that's gonna happen soon enough. Yeah, and we've got some sources that have given us some uh, little details here and there, some nuggets about the new 4Runner. So we're going to talk about what we know and what we can expect out of the new model. So do you wanna start first with the Land Cruiser and then go to the 4Runner? Yeah, so the new Land Cruiser is a big departure compared to the older 200 series. It's a lot smaller. It's got a four cylinder instead of a V8 hybrid only, and it's gonna start at about $56,000 and go all the way up to the mid 70s if you purchase a first edition. If you compare that to the old Land Cruiser, well that started in the 80s and then went up to like the mid 90s. So it's really dropped a lot of price, especially for the base end of things. That asks a lot of questions. What is Toyota gonna do with the new Foreigner now that the Land Cruiser is more affordable? Yeah, so let's start with the base price of $55,000. Andre and I just did a video where we went in search of the least expensive new truck and we found them in the $40,000 range. And a lot of the comments that you guys left is that a $40,000 truck is not inexpensive. So a $55,000 Land Cruiser also probably feels very expensive. And I understand that, but keep in mind that the previous generation was over 100,000. Right, but it was also a much larger vehicle three rows, V8, it's kind of a different can of worms. So this new Land Cruiser is, like we mentioned earlier, is a lot more tidy in its dimensions. It also has cool things like a rear locking diff, standard brake controller, which is great, but it maybe to some folks is not quite as much vehicle as the outgoing one. So let me give you just a quick overview for those of you who haven't seen the video of uh, us comparing it to the current 4Runner what it feels like to sit behind the wheel of it. First and foremost, uh, the styling is a uh, very traditional Toyota and you can have it in two flavors. Isn't that right, Tommy? Right, so apart from the first edition, they're gonna have the 1958 trim, which is the entry level version. And then the Land Cruiser trim, which gives you some more goodies, a nicer interior, nicer set of wheels. So um, really it depends on kind of how you want it. Now the 58 version is pretty basic on the inside, a lot of dark plastic relatively small screen. It's not exactly a bean can, but it certainly isn't a luxury experience. Whereas if you do step up to something like that 1958 or the Land Cruiser trim, you're gonna have some more luxuries. Yeah, so I sat in the 58 uh, and what it felt like was very old school Toyota. So if you recall what Toyota of the days of yore used to be like, that's what it feels like. So everything you need, nothing you don't, very upright seating position. Uh, very basic but comfortable seats, a lot of big chunky controls, but there's also something else that we need to talk about and that is the front fascia because there are two choices. There's kind of a traditional choice and there's a more modern choice. Yep, great point. There's the round headlights, there's the square headlights, and then of course the first edition is gonna have pretty much everything to tie it all together. So you got a couple of different options there on the design, on the front fascia, it tows about 6,000 pounds. It's got that 2.4 liter turbo engine with the standard hybrid system and the eight speed automatic. And it has a full time four wheel drive system with a center differential and a center differential lock along with the rear locker. So some really great tech in this vehicle, some good off-road gear as well. Now Dad, let's talk about how we think that's gonna to compare to the new 4Runner. Yeah, I just wanted to also talk about the powertrain because we do have experience with that because it's basically the four cylinder that's out of the current Tacoma. But it's the hybrid. Yeah. So it, it's not quite the same. It's gonna be more closely related to the hybrid Tacoma, which is coming just down the road. The TRD Pro. But the basic 2.4 is the same. They also use it in vehicles like the Highlander. So it has had some road time at this point. Yeah, and one of the things that I've uh, figured out driving the new Tacoma over the last 4,000 miles is that that little turbo doesn't sound great, the four cylinder turbo, but what they've done is they've given you a lot of usable low end torque. So the torque comes in at 1700 RPMs and it's actually greater than the old six cylinder. Horsepower is about the same at 300. Now we're gonna even have more torque when it comes to the hybrid, uh, but 
there is a lot of power to be had when you're going up, you know, I-70, uh, up the I-Gauntlet, uh, and there's certainly plenty of power when you're off-roading. And now we did recently publish an extreme towing video, Tommy, where we towed about almost 5,000 pounds with it, which will be very similar to what this tows. Uh, but you do start to run out of some of that power when you do start towing at, you know, mile above sea level, mile above sea level at about 5,000 pounds of weight behind you. But I'm expecting that it tows much better than the 3.5 V6 it's replacing in the Tacoma. And certainly that 4 liter V6 in the 4Runner with the 5 speed automatic is a bulletproof powertrain, not to discount that fact. But it is not a great powertrain if you're looking to go 75 miles an hour up by 70. It does really start to work very hard, even at not towing. So um, as you mentioned, Ed, the Land Cruiser, 326 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque. Now, what we predict, and we've talked about this in the past, is that the upcoming 4Runner is going to be much more closely related to the 4th Gen Tacoma than the current 4Runner was related to the outgoing Tacoma. And that is to say, we think a lot of like the interior components, the front fascia even, the powertrains, are going to be probably pretty much in line. And the reason we think that is because now the Land Cruiser is slotting in in kind of a new, different look, a little bit more premium here and there, depending on the spec. Full-time four-wheel drive with a sensor differential instead of a selectable version, which is an option on the, the current Foreigner, granted, but um, standard on the Land Cruiser. So we think that the new Tacoma is going to be, or the new Foreigner is going to be much more closely related to the new Tacoma. So I would suspect that, that the new Foreigner is going to have the same powertrain as the Tacoma, which is a 2.4 turbo and possibly the hybrid variant. Yeah, and we're pretty certain about the fact that it's going to be unveiled very soon because traditionally, and this is, you know, many generations, when the Tacoma comes out about a year later, or when the Tacoma, new Tacoma is unveiled, about a year later, uh, the new uh, 4Runner is unveiled. And so about this time last year, Toyota unveiled the new um, Tacoma. And so now the new 4Runner should be in the wings, waiting, waiting to go out onto the stage. You know, you say that, Dad. Yeah. But the third gen Tacoma... Uh -huh. Launched for the 2015 model year, and the 4Runner dates back to like 2010. All right, well, there are. So, there so that, are there and are, granted, it was updated, but it, I, there, there is some precedent that we might, uh, there might be a little bit more of a wait than we were expecting. But let's, let's hope that, you know, we're going to see it soon. And then uh, we, of course, have taken the current uh, Tacoma, and we have added, you know, a second compartment over the bed. Right, and I think that's likely Using what it's going to be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we we've kind of generated some um, artificial intelligence images, but it seems to line up with some of the the camouflage truck shots we've seen, and also from what we've um, heard some rumblings that it's going to be closely related to Coma, but maybe with like a topper on the back, and then of course seats in the trunk. I'd love it if it was removable, like the 1980s. First gen four runner. Yeah, but that's a badass truck. I don't think that that would ever happen. No, so, safety wise, probably not. So, Dad, let's talk about pricing, right? So, the current four runner starts forty one ish, yeah. forty one thousand minus dealer markups. Um, yes, you're probably not going to see a lot of markups on an SR five though. And then if you do extend all the way up to the Pro, which you might see some markups on, that's going to be the 55, 56, 57, maybe 60 with markups. So we're looking in like 41 to like 56, 57. So you're saying basically where in terms of pricing where the 400 tops out um, is where the Land Cruiser begins. Well, I hope so, Dad. But when we saw the pricing on the new fourth gen Tacoma, we did see some price jumps, right? And now, 4th Gen Tacoma starts at 31.5 and then extends up to mid to high 50s for a limited. And that's before you even get into like some of the pro stuff. So I would expect maybe we're going to see a price increase on Foreigner as well. So I'm going to pitch to you, starting 45, topping out at 60. So... A top dog uh, Forerunner is going to be about the same as an entry level Land Cruiser. Um, I mean, maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe, but it might even kind of be a little bit more overlap than that. We might even see some overlap past the 1958 Land Cruiser trim into that more luxurious version. But I kind of think Land Cruiser, the 250 series, by the way, this is why people are all. I was just having dinner with someone who's very grumpy that they called it a Land Cruiser because abroad, this is known as a Land Cruiser Prado. It's a smaller Land Cruiser. But in my opinion, I'm hoping it's got kind of a different character than the Forerunner. This vehicle is very impressive. I'm really excited for the Land Cruiser. But it doesn't quite feel like that 
ultimate rock crawl machine with the huge shocks and the big tires. This feels like a more grown up, mature Overlander with some comfort, with capability, but with refinement. And I'm hoping that Forerunner still retains some of that raw goodness that we see, not only in the current Forerunner, but the Wrangler and the Bronco, a little bit unhinged. Wait, wait you're talking about the Land Cruiser, not the GX? Um, yeah, well, G <laughs> GX is even more luxurious, but I'm hoping Forerunner has got some of that, like, boy racer, big tires and stripes and scoops. Like, we need that exciting uh, closed uh, top four-wheel drive from Toyota. I'm going to take a different approach. I think that the two are going to be very similar in their off-road capability. You don't think that the the is going to have any? I mean, look, Tacoma, you can get with the stay bar disconnect, which now that I'm thinking, it, I'm, I think you can get that in the um, Land Cruiser as well. Um, but I'm hoping like you can get a big 33 or 35 inch tall tire onto a Forerunner without a lift, where maybe you would have to do that on the Land Cruiser. I think what you're going to see is that you're going to be paying for the Land Cruiser name. So in terms of capability, the Forerunner probably, in my opinion, will be as capable as the Land Cruiser, but you're not going to get that cachet. You're not going to get that Land Cruiser name that you know your neighbors will see when you're driving it down the street. Uh, and the Land Cruiser, uh, at least when I compared it to the current generation Forerunner in Chicago, mm -hmm. was a little bit bigger. So it does offer more space, but certainly nowhere near as much space as you know the, the previous three-row. Yeah. You know, with those seats on the side uh, offered. So you're going to go a little bigger. I think you're going to go a little bit more um, prestigious, but I'm not sure that the Land Cruiser is going to have any more capability than the Foreigner. And I don't see Toyota. I mean, let's face it, right now, if, you, if I were to ask you, what's Toyota's most off road capable, not truck, but car? What would you say? Foreigner. Yeah, Foreigner. Right. Yeah. But, and the other thing too, Dan, maybe they're going to differentiate a little in towing. Land Cruiser tows 6,000. Maybe they're going to keep Foreigner right around that 5,000 mark. GX, of course, tows 9,000 when properly equipped. So that's We're way... We're Lexus, of course. Yeah, that's way beyond that. But then, of course, the, the challenge that Toyota's run into is they have so many crossovers competing for the um, off-road space per dollar. I mean, everything down from the RAV4 TRD off-road to the 400, to the Land Cruiser, to the Sequoia, to the Sequoia TRD Pro and all these different versions of that vehicle How about as well. the TX? Don't forget that. Uh, uh, TX is the Lexus. Yeah, I mean the uh, Highland, Grand Highlander, sorry. Yeah, um, but that's not I'm really... I'm in Lexus world. <laughs> that's not really like an off-road yeah. Toyota. No, granted, the RAV4 off-road isn't either, but it's kind of trying to be. Um, but yeah, the off-road SUV segment for Toyota is so saturated. So I hope Forerunner differentiates itself a little bit by being a little more affordable and a little bit more rugged. I would be awesome if I had an open top. That'd be a great way to differentiate it. Then it'd be more Wrangler Bronco competitor. But we're going to have to see what they do. So uh, let's, uh, like I said, fast forward uh, to this time next year, and you've got the new Forerunner and the new Land Cruiser sitting on the lot. Let's say they're Optanium and they're not being marked up, and let's hope they're being marked down. <laughs> well, I think you have to wait more than a year for that to happen there. Yeah, you're probably right. When I'm 43 years old, and you're looking at these vehicles in the current generation on the lot. <laughs> when, when I've got my handicap sticker. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right, right Dad. So which of the two, and now we're really speculating, would you go for? Are you, are you so in a way when you're saying more rugged, you're also saying more youthful on the Forerunner, sure, as opposed to more mature and mold, more old man uh, on the Land Cruiser. Which of those two would you rather have? I know which one I'd rather have. Well, for me, um, I would probably go. Granted, we don't know officially anything about it, but if it is what I think it is, I would go Forerunner. I like the Land Cruiser. My challenge is at $56,000. The interior doesn't represent a $56,000 vehicle. And at mid-60s, it definitely does. But then at mid-60s, you're like, well, maybe just get the Lexus GX. So I'm hoping Forerunner, TRD off-road, mid to high $40,000 range, hopefully 33-inch tall tower capable, click that rear locker on, pull the top off Toyota and then go hit the trails. That's what I would love. That's what I want. Yeah. And I'm with you, Tommy, because, you know, the, the problem is, well, it's a, it's, it's a problem that, that, that you have with Land Cruisers, with Range Rovers, with Grenadiers. And that is the more expensive you go, the less off-roady you are ever going to be mm -hmm. because the vehicle becomes too nice to put in harm's way. So I would actually go even the other way. I would just get myself a base SR5 uh, Forerunner sure. and, you know, Put some, I'm guessing it's going to come with like 33s. No, it's kind of like 30s. On okay, the yeah. Five, yeah. yeah. So put some 35s on. I just watched a video where somebody actually, uh, TRD John put 37s 
on his new Tacoma uh, with rubbing. Yeah, with, with, <laughs> with rubbing. Copious amounts, yeah. But you could do 35s on the new Tacoma without rubbing. Oh, no way. Yeah. No, without the, rubbing? He put 37s on, and there was just a little bit of rubbing. 35s in a fully flexed out t- Tacoma. Yeah, Toyota says you could... Toyota sh- says 33s. The truck's got like 31 and a bits on I it, I thought it was think. 35s. No, I think it's anyway, 33s. I would put 35s because that's, you know, 35 is a new... 31. Uh, so I would put 35. I think it's about the right size. I think 37s are too big uh, on my uh, SR5 uh, 4Runner and spend, what, $40,000, save myself 20K or maybe more on the price of a Land Cruiser and let the, uh, you know, let the posh folks have that and let me have the one I can just go and bash. Yeah. Well, folks, let us know what you think in the comments below. Dad, thank you for your help on this video. We're really excited to get behind the wheel of every vehicle we mentioned today and let you know what it's like out in the dirt. And as always, this has been Tommy. And Roman saying, stay tuned because there is foreigner news coming, I believe, at some point. (laughs) Allegedly. In the near future. (laughs) See you next time. Ciao.